Yeah. So on Friday, let me share my screen. We didn't really have a ton of time to do the notes that um, we had on there. So uh, what we did on Friday is I read the notes to you. We talked about them, but you guys did not really, as far as I know, have the time to really complete them. So the freshwater ecosystem, copy and pasting those over. Make sure you go and finish those up, please. Same with the marine ecosystems. Um, yeah, those uh, those two need to be done by Friday, probably at the latest. So what we're going to do today, okay, so for those of you online, the kids here know this. We have two sets of notes today, one more set of notes tomorrow, and then we have an activity that we'll do for the next two days that require you to, like, go outside in the ecosystem and all that stuff. So you'll get, we'll stop doing notes after tomorrow. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit of something to look forward to that's not notes. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go right on into this ecological succession notes. So I'm going to open up both of those. So you have your Google Docs. Everybody should have their own for this. This one's about a page and a half. And then there is one set of Google Slides. Now, again, I'm giving you guys the Google Slides so you can copy and paste. Thank you. And again, I don't want to see anybody in the chat because then I'm just going to delete the Google Slides and give you guys the PDF instead where you have to type your own things in instead of copy and pasting. So stay out of the chat and you guys will have access to the PowerPoint. Copies, understood. Who needs in? Bill. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and... Did I hit deny or accept? I think you hit deny. Oh, whoops. No, he's right there. Okay. I thought I hit the wrong one. All right. So let's go ahead and just get right on into it. Does uh, everybody have it open? Are we good? Ready to go? What's up? Wrong classroom? Okay, bye. Okay, bye. I hate it when that happens. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but okay. So ecological succession. Let's start with our first part. Over time, ecosystems change. This is a thing that just happens. Sometimes it happens really quickly, which means abruptly. Sometimes it happens gradually over time. They change in response to natural and human disturbances. So we can have natural disasters like a flood, a hurricane, um, a fire. Those types of things are going to disrupt an ecosystem pretty quickly, right? If you think about the fires that have been happening all across the United States, do those ecosystems really last much longer after that happens? No, it's a quick, oh no, type of moment, right? But when we think about a climate, um, well, in general, climate change is happening super duper slowly, but it's affecting all of the ecosystems all over the earth as we keep going, right? The more things we do to hurt the climate, the, the more it changes, right? It's not good. Basically, climate change is not good. Maybe we'll watch a video on that. I have a really cool video, but not really? today. It's a whole documentary. So, watch today? no, we don't have time today. Uh, so, as an ecosystem changes, older occupants die out and newer organisms move in, thus changing the community of organisms in the ecosystem. So, as something goes extinct or maybe they can't live there in the same ecosystem anymore, they will move out. Someone else, something else will move in. Oh, focus. Focus. Thank you. So this change in the ecosystems in the community is called ecological succession. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so go ahead and take about a minute. Get those ones done.
All righty. So, our next one. Primary succession. What was that? Ecological succession that occurs on a land surface where there is no soil, that's called primary succession. So, no soil exists on new land, it's only rock. Then the new, so things like the new land is exposed when glaciers melt, or sometimes it's formed when um, volcanoes erupt, something along those lines. Sorry, there's a hair in here. You guys ever get hairs in your mask and it tickles your nose? No. There's always my, my dog's fur is always in my masks. Or my cats, I guess. Could be the cats, too. So, when there's brand new land, like glaciers melting or a volcano or like, it's just rocks. This is called primary succession. Okay, give you a minute or so here. That's okay. You can always continue this after. You don't have to stay immediately up with us. Go at your pace. All righty. Our next part. More on primary succession. When this new land is exposed or formed, so a glacier melts and they expose the, the rocks underneath, or the um, volcano explodes and now there's lava that sol solidifies into rock. When it's formed, a lot of species will start to inhabit this area. The first species to populate this area is called the pioneer species. So they are the pioneers, the beginning of that area. The most common pioneer species is lichen. Lichen is a composite of fungus or an alga. So basically it's like moss almost. So like green stuff. It's, yeah, it's a plant. It starts to grow on rocks. As it grows, it sometimes breaks up those rocks. When the lichen dies, it deposits organic material into the cracks and the crevices. And then from there, it starts to form soil. So that's what those little X's on the rocks are. It's the lichen that's dying and exposing the soil so that now there's soil for other plants to start growing in. Okay. I don't think most teachers do use the Google Slides anymore because, yeah, our class wasn't the one that was like the major issue with that. So I feel like it's okay for our class to be on there. Plus, you guys all know that if uh, I see any chatting going on, I'm just going to take them away. So, yep. Okay, I'm going to give you about one more minute. Have you guys catch up to this part? Yeah. All righty, next slide. More on primary succession. Over time, where those the soil has been formed, right? Small plants like moss and grass start to grow there. They grow in this newly formed soil and then eventually more things will grow like small bushes or trees. And once you start getting the grasses, the bushes and the trees, what else can start moving into there? Any ideas? Rabbits or things that eat those plants, right? So it kind of starts a whole ecosystem.
Mm -hmm. Mm. Then you might have to type the parts you can't copy and paste. Sorry. Okay, ready for our next one? No. Okay, more on primary succession. Soft wood uh, conifers are the first trees to populate. Then hardwood, do the cities trees begin to grow. So essentially different types of trees begin to grow from the soil. It takes years and years and years for this to happen. This is not a quick thing either. If you ever, if I don't know, have any of you guys ever planted a tree? No. Was that a yes or a no? Okay, Madi has. Did it take a long time for it to grow? Probably. Yeah. Trees take a really long time to grow. Why? Because they, they, they just don't grow that fast. It's like a human. You don't grow that fast either. Yeah, so they just don't grow very fast. These e ecosystems take a long time to like become true full-blown ecosystems once they start at the very beginning. So once these uh, organisms or the trees populate the area, they go into the area, their seeds are then deposited into the soil. Birds that migrate into the area may be able to um, poop out the seeds and then or they get carried away by the wind or the water but basically the seeds from the trees are dispersed throughout the ecosystem and more trees are able to grow from those seeds you want to watch a video on that maybe oh you want to watch a one hour video of the, the seed bursting open and then no. no, we don't. That takes like 30 seconds to watch that. So uh -huh. you can speed that a part up. Well, I, never seen them <clears throat> I don't know. Well, maybe we can watch. I don't know if it would really work for the people at home. I could tell them the episode to watch, but it would be difficult to play it on Google Meets. But maybe I can find some Netflix. They have a lot of good documentaries on ecosystems and we can do like water ones the, like the ocean or we can watch ones on jungles or deserts i really like those things nature documentaries basically sorry ready for our next one <laughs> okay here we go more on primary succession once the flora which is the plants once it the flora is established in the area. So a lot of trees and plants and grass have grown. Animals, fungi, and other organisms move in. So you get squirrels, bunnies, deer, like it shows in the picture. You can get bacteria and things that start to grow in the area. And eventually you have a community, a climax community is reached. The climax community is a community of organisms that has reached a steady state. The population of organisms is balanced and stable in a climax, climax community. So essentially you have the perfect amount of trees, plants, different species of animals for that ecosystem to sustain itself and stay alive and keep all the different animals and plants in that system alive. Okay, this is kind of the goal of an ecosystem to grow plants and all of that stuff have the animals there and be a, just like a stable place i don't know i don't know just keep going at your own pace it's fine All righty, <clears throat> our next slide, secondary succession. This one is a little bit different. So this is what happens when an ecosystem that was at its climax community, it was awesome, it was thriving, the plants and animals in it were all okay. This is when it's changed by a natural event or a human activity. So something like a forest fire that can completely destroy an ecosystem. 
is not good. This is where you get secondary succession. Farming also destroys natural ecosystems because we have to like cut down all the trees in that area, plant those crops, but farmers do a lot to make sure that plants and animals, sorry, that animals and insects don't eat their crops so that they can sell them to humans, right? So it disrupts the whole natural ecosystem that was in that spot. Because they're growing them to sell to humans so they can make money. Um, the more you give an animal, the more it comes back. Yeah. It depends on the animal, I think. So in both of these disturbances, so a forest fire or uh, farming, the stable and diverse climax of community is wiped out. So it essentially just wipes the whole ecosystem out and it's got to kind of start from scratch again. Got to start all over. Um, from the fires, yeah. Yeah. So this is happening a lot lately, the secondary succession, because there's a fire happening in Colorado right now. There's probably some fires in California still. I'm sure there's a couple in Arizona somewhere. We've been having a lot of fires this year. You've seen it all over the news and stuff, right? Do you guys watch the news? Okay. Well, if you watch the news, they talk a lot about the fires lately. They're all over the place. All right. Our next one. More on secondary succession. And if you look at the pictures, that's kind of how it happens. An ecosystem tends to restore itself to its previous state following this disturbance. This is called secondary succession. It's been burned. Yeah. So in secondary succession, the previous climax community tries to rebuild itself. So before the forest fire, it looks like a nice, healthy forest with plants and animals. It got burned down, and now it's just this bare bones, tree, soil, doesn't do too well. But then it's going to start to regrow itself and move on. Yes, Yoshi? Can a burnt tree still That's a good question. I don't know. I don't think so, because it's the leaves that really help that. Let me Google it, though. Okay, I'll give you guys a minute or so while I Google Yoshi's question. For those of you online, Yoshi asked if a burnt tree can still give off oxygen, like a tree that has all of its leaves. <laughs> okay, so a burnt tree, so when you burn a tree, it doesn't give off oxygen like normal. It does the opposite and it gives off carbon dioxide, which is not what we want in the environment. Yeah, that's a good question. Yep. Basically. All right, our next one. Here's some examples. A wildfire destroys a forest community. The fire burns the plants to the ground and leaves bare soil. Animals are then displaced from the ecosystem because they don't have plants to eat there anymore. Shortly after the fire, mosses and grasses will start to regrow in that area. Then some small bushes will start to reappear, and then some soft wooded trees, then the hard wooded trees, and then some of the species that had to move out because it was burned down will start to move back into the area, and then that climax community is reestablished and back on its feet. Wow. 
Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, we just talked about how it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep copy and pasting, Yoshi. Okay. Oh, that's the end of that one. Okay. Wow. That was so interesting. So. Basically, once you are done with filling out the notes on this sheet, you can turn it in. I'm going to give you guys, so it's 12.53. I'll give you three minutes until 12.56 to finish it up, and then we're going to get going on our second set of notes for the day. Three minutes. If you're not done, you can finish them up later. Yes, that's fine, too. Okay. So we'll do about three minutes. My foot fell asleep from the way I was sitting. Mm -hmm. Got the pins and needles. Yeah, but we don't have a recess in the afternoon, so. So once you're done filling out this note sheet, you guys can no, turn it in. Don't leave yet. Yep, when you're done, turn it in, please. It's a good thought process. Some things stick in your brain when you remember some things better than others. Well, yeah, you forgot your brother and sister at daycare. Yeah. Yeah, I would get mad at you too. I would, I would. Sorry. All right, let's go ahead and get going. Our other one, our biodiversity notes. I think these are shorter, so you guys can open up the notes sheet biodiversity. Oh, I biodiversity. No, biodiversity. So you can open up the notes sheet and the PowerPoint. Again, I should not see any chatting on the PowerPoint, please. This one's a bit shorter. This one's a bit shorter. If you look at the Google Slides. What? Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about biodiversity next. I'll give you about one minute to get this pulled up. Are we good online? Still doing all right? I don't think so because they have the people from the Good. All right. All right. <coughs> Yoshi. I know I okay, rain it in a little bit, please. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and start on our biodiversity one. Um, this one's a bit shorter, I think. We've got some definitions you can copy and paste over. So, to start, biodiversity. I just need. Um, there's a lot of variation of life on Earth. The degree of variation is called biodiversity. Essentially, it just describes the different types of species on Earth. So if you think about a shark, the biodiversity of a shark, you could have a great white shark, a hammerhead shark, a goblin shark, a mako shark, a tiger shark, a bull shark. There's like a hundred different species of shark, right? Megalodons, I don't think are real, sorry. Um, but besides that, even if it is a real species of, of shark, the megalodon, it's part of the biodiversity of a species because there are so many different types of sharks. There's tons of different types of dogs, cats, 
Actually, I don't know a lot of different types of cats. I was thinking like three I was thinking more like a house cat. Oh. <laughs> no. There are several species of cats. Really? There are. There's yeah. black cats. There's orange cats. What Just kidding. That's not what they're called. <laughs> they have names, but I don't know what they're called. Um. But okay. Biodiversity just talks about the variation between different species on Earth. So there's hundreds of species of birds, of sharks, of fish, of plants, like all kinds of things. There's tons of them, right? So biodiversity is just the slight differences between all of them. Um, it describes the variation between species as well as within species. Biodiversity also describes the variety of ecosystems on Earth. So biodiversity refers to all the different ecosystems populated with different varieties of plants and animals. Essentially, biodiversity is telling you that there's a lot of different things on Earth. Does that make sense? No. Okay. I mean, I think I have to, like, get more into it. We'll go to the next slide in a minute. Maybe it'll give you a little bit more information on it. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Copy and paste then. Out, O U T. All righty. Next slide. There are three different types of biodiversity. You can have ecosystem diversity. The word diversity just means difference. So differences. Something is different. What about the bio? The bio is life. So differences in life, basically. It just means that something is alive. Bio means something is alive. Ghosts are not alive. They're dead. That's the whole point of a ghost. Oh, fish. <laughs> fish is alive. It's part of the bio. Yeah. Nemo alive. Huh? Nemo, yes. It's a clownfish. SpongeBob is not a real thing. Now, so you can have ecosystem diversity, which is the differences between ecosystem. You can have species diversity, which is the difference between species. Or you can have genetic diversity, which would be the species between, or the difference between like different organisms, okay. your genetics, what, you, what makes you who you are. Oh. Okay, type a little bit, please. Okay, give me about 30 seconds on this one. Alrighty. So now, um, this is the chart that you work on on your notes, right? Ecosystem diversity is the first definition. Is it just definitions, or do you have to put examples? Let's see. Just describing them. So the definitions of the different ones. Good. So our first one, ecosystem diversity, includes the variety in ecosystems. So it accounts for the different habitats, communities, and ecological processes in an environment. It also describes the variety of organisms that live in an ecosystem. Last week, we talked about those different ecosystems. We just called them biomes instead. So we had the forest biome, desert, water, right? The different places that ecosystems will be. The jungle, yeah. The Arctic, things like that. Coral reef is an ecosystem. Well, there's different sections of the ocean, right? So, kind of, though. 
you can have the coral reef itself is a whole ecosystem because there are so many animals that live inside and around coral reefs. Yeah, but coral reefs only live close to the surface because they need the sunlight to be able to survive. So the farther down and deeper you go in the ocean, you're going to get a different type of ecosystem that doesn't need sunlight to survive. Like weird ant, um, plants and weird sea animals. White tigers? I don't know. I think so too. When I was a freshman in high school, I had to do a project on white tigers. So you'd think I would remember where they live, but I don't. That was like 15 years ago. Okay, no, it was like 10 years ago. I'm not that old. <laughs> All right, let's look at our next type of um, diversity. This one is our species diversity. This literally means that there's differences between living things. You can have cats, plants, dogs, humans, fish, all the different things, right? Yeah. It refers to the number of different species that live in an environment as well as the number of different species that live on Earth. Yes, Elijah? Of white tigers? 200 white tigers left? No. Where do they live? Yeah, that's not very much at all. They're very much on the endangered species list. Okay. I don't know. It might be a type of slug, maybe. Um, that seems to be a red-headed human. They are rare. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> It looks like a flower, yes. Yep. All right, let's look at our next one. Genetic diversity means the variety of traits within a species. This can include a variety of traits between species. Genetic diversity refers to the different forms of traits that are coded by genetic information. So let's talk about this in the terms of humans versus like plants and animals. If we think about humans and genetic diversity, our genes determine the color of skin we have, the hair color we have, how tall we are, how fat we are sometimes, um, the color of your eyes, the shape of your nose. So genetic diversity, it skips generations sometimes. Yeah. Um, genetic diversity determine is what makes different things within the same species look different. So humans, we most of us look different, right? We all come in different shapes, colors, sizes, heights, all of the different. Twins, yes, twins are different. Identical twins will look exactly the same. Um, they're still twins, even if they're stuck together. <laughs> so genetic diversity just makes things within the same species it depends on where they're stuck together. Oh, that's Most of the time it's by their side body and they have two different hearts. Yeah. Sometimes. I don't know a lot about it, but my knowledge of that comes from Grey's Anatomy. So, I don't know. I watched Grey's Anatomy when I was younger, yeah. Okay, I guess I still watch it. It's just not on anymore. Yeah. 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 It's a good show. Why don't you like it, Monty? Um, it's just I like the medical dramas. Okay, let's keep going though. After genetic diversity, we have um, different biodiversity. Okay. There. Can I talk, please? Biodiversity has two important processes. One, sexual reproduction, so the ability to have babies. And two, mutations, which is like people or animals being born with different traits and things. Yeah, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give you a second on these ones. A penguin. 
It's a DNA, a strand of DNA, yeah. That's how DNA looks, yeah. DNA is what determines our genetic makeup, the, this part. The genetic diversity is determined by the DNA. I don't know. Maybe it skipped a few generations. You are really short. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. So our next one, sexual reproduction is the production of offspring by two parents. So the ability to have a baby. Each parent will give half of its DNA, creating offspring that is new and unique combination of traits. Over time, more and more individuals have new and unique combinations of traits, leading to more diversity or more differences within the species. Variation in a species helps stabilize the species and increases the likelihood that a species can overcome disturbances and changes in the environment. So, it's not nasty, it's life. So, um, over long periods of time, the variety of individuals can become so different that a new species is formed, thus increasing the diversity on Earth. So basically, we need more and more of different species to be born to create all the types of differences within the species so that it can be, it can sustain and live for a long time. Okay, I'll give you a minute or so on this. I'm done. As you finish up, you can get it turned in. Am I good to go? Yeah, you're fine. No. Bye, Miss Jones. Bye, guys. All right, our last slide here is about mutation. So a mutation is a change in the DNA of an organism. A change in the DNA code of an organism can lead to a new or altered trait. Mutations can be harmful or they can be helpful. Helpful mutations will increase biodiversity by creating new traits that might be better than the old traits. Over longer periods of time, accumulations of mutations can lead to formation of a new species, thus increasing the diversity of life on Earth as well. So, mutations can be good. It mutates and allows the species to adapt to the new environment, maybe. But mutations can also be bad. They, they can cause disease or um, just something that's going to make the organism die instead of survive. So it depends on the type of mutation. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. All right. Mutation is a change in the DNA code of an organism. So it's like DNA, there's 23 pairs of chromosomes in your DNA. Uh, it's just too hard to explain Aww. right now. You guys learn this as you get into like high school. Aww, I can't wait that long. Yeah. Then Google it yourself. You should learn that by high school. Okay, so once you guys are all done with these, you can get them turned in. So both sets of notes can be turned in when you